Johnny Dean, Dennis Smith. So as the baby boomer generation, we've taken over the reins of society. Uh, we've uh, really been in ch general charge of things now for the better part of 35 years. And if I do say so myself, I think we've done an okay job. Really? I do. But we're also known, and I've talked about this before, as the child-centric generation. Many boomers, I think, seem to have uh, raised their kids on the premise that, that they could do no wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the kids are the centers of their own universes. Now, what this has done, I think, has spawned a rather different work ethic on the part of the succeeding generation and Gen Y, too. So much that even we boomers can recognize a group of entitled slackers when we see it. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, that's a bit harsh. But the reality is that as our generation starts to hand off control to the next one, many boomers feel that Gen Y is really not up to the task of leading the country and then moving the world forward, just as we did. Uh, from a professional standpoint, I think this has kind of created a war in the workplace. I mentioned that earlier as well. What is that conflict? Well, boomers are concerned that their legacy will pass with them. Gen Yers, the young crowd, the 20s, are worried that, that the uh, opportunities that were, were promised to them actually don't exist. There's the conflict. Here to talk about that with us on the Boomer's Lifeline is Garrison Wynn. He's a nationally recognized uh, personal influence expert, former Fortune 500 executive, best-selling author of The Real Truth About Success, What the Top 1% Do Differently and Why They Won't Tell You. Hey, Garrison, <laughs> welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you, John. Good to be here. Uh, so, okay, a lot of the Generation Y folks, now we're coming from the Boomer perspective, of course, but the Gen Ys, those in their 20s, they, they, they seem ill-prepared for the challenges of the working world. And I wonder if much of that, Garrison, has to do with how they were raised. We told them that they're all winners, they're all special, and now many of them, I think, expect to be treated as such as they enter the workforce. First of all, are Boomers to blame for this? Well, I mean, you know, each generation does the best they can with their kids, and we never parent our children the way that we were parented typically. So the idea was is we were concerned that, that self-esteem was the issue. We felt that, that if a generation had more self-esteem than we did, they would be more successful. And what we found out uh, is that if at a certain level where self-esteem is extremely high, there are a couple of side effects. Uh, for boys, it's a lack of ambition, and for girls, it's lack of compassion. So hmm. if your self-esteem is just really off the charts, you're just laying on the couch, you know, smoking weed, playing Xbox, or you're, <laughs> you know, you don't care about people's feelings. So that's kind of the issue. So. Wow. Okay. So here's something uh, interesting that we came across, Garrison. It was a, st a statistic rather that said 70% of college freshmen right now are female. So my question Correct. is, where are all the guys in that generation? Have they, they have just, no drive. Is that because they, they gave up? Exactly. Well, what happened was is that we decided that we should pattern um, everything uh, after the females. And then women have been suppressed uh, over the years. It, it made perfect sense. But the problem is, 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 is girls mature so much faster than boys that at, by age 10 or 11 or 12, the boys are behind. Mm. And uh, by the time they reach you know, uh, high school, they believe that they really can't compete. And remember, also, we told them in grade school not to compete. So they're competing against, <laughs> they're competing against girls they can't compete with after being told they shouldn't compete. Wow. It's a very wow. confusing message, and it's tough. I mean, the boys are actually in trouble. Uh, I, I spoke at a convention one time. I had a room full of 27-year-old female engineers, and they all earned more money than their boyfriends and husbands and mm. expected that's how it was. They, they expect to, to rule and lead their generation. The, the, they don't expect the boys and the men to uh, to take uh, yeah. to take an equal role in that. Yeah, and you mentioned that a second ago the the, the lack of uh, ambition and lack of drive on the part of boys, and you're seeing that a whole lot. Sure. And when I when I get that in my mi image in my mind, it's of the 25, 26 year old guy, as you said, sitting around on the couch smoking whatever he's got in his spice rack and 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 playing right. Xbox. Now, sure. uh, many many boomers, I think, uh, are, are skeptical of the ability of Gen Xers and Gen Yers to carry on their legacy. Uh, I, I think similar to the way that, that, that our parents, I think, were highly skeptical of us boomers when we were in the same position. Now, we've done okay. Do you think the next generation of workers and parents, future parents, are going to do all right? Yeah, absolutely. I think they've learned uh, that, we, that being your, your kid's friend is not as effective as being their parent. We tried to be their friend, and yeah. it worked out very well. Yeah. I mean, you can go to any airport and see you know, the, the mother dressed like her daughter, and they're... That's uh, a lot, I, you know. Uh, sometimes that's disturbing. But the thing is, is that <laughs> I think I think we learned a big lesson, and that is that you know we can 
they have a great relationship with our kids. Uh, we don't have to pretend like we're kids with them. We don't have to create that situation. So I, I think we have learned some things, and I think future generations will, will do fine. So, Garrison, do you think uh, this entitlement attitude is, is going to go away once these kids who are in their 20s realize that maybe we exaggerated a little bit about just how special they are, just how many amazing abilities they have? Uh, do you think that's going to go away? To some degree it will, uh, and to some degree it won't. I mean, little babies are not, you know, born entitled. We do that to them. Uh, right. And uh, some of that stuff could be irreversible to some degree. I mean, you know, you can, you can find a guy in, 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 you know, laying in a storm drain with no job and nothing going on who still believes he's better than other people, <laughs> and that's a belief that starts early. Wow. So some of that won't go away, but a lot of it will. I mean, a lot of them they'll realize, well, maybe I'm not as special as I thought I was. But you have to realize if you're if your self-esteem is, is that high, you can't really be shamed and you can't really be criticized. Right. In other words, you, know, you tell a, a 50-year-old guy, hey, you screwed up, and oh, I'm sorry, I did a bad job. You tell a 25-year-old you screwed up, and oh, yeah, but I'm still awesome. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Boy, have you nailed it. <laughs> Man, Garrison Wynn is with us. So now your book is out. Uh, it's called The Real Truth About Success, What the Top 1% Do Differently and Why They Won't Tell You. We only got a minute or so. Just tell us very quickly about it and where we can pick it up. Uh, we studied 5,000 top performers over 10 years to find out what the people who were really extremely influential did, the rest didn't do, and they took advantage of their advantages. And we talk about how to do that and the journey that we took and the research behind that, and it's a fun, quick read, and it's got a lot of great information you can apply uh, right away. Uh, you can go to Amazon.com. It's the fastest way to get it. You can get it on Kindle or hard copy. Kindle or hard copy, and your website, I believe, is GarrisonWin.com, if I wrote that down correctly. That's correct. We've got a new, uh, uh, a, a new seminar coming up called How to Be a New Manager for Young People to be Better Manage Their Peers and Not Get Sued. Oh, good. Stuff young managers need to know coming up in Houston, Texas on August the 20th, excuse me, on April the 24th. Great. Nice. Garrison Wynn, uh, W-Y-N-N is how his last name is spelled, Garrison Wynn. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Wonderful, wonderful information. We're going to have him back on. I think we could talk about that, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, hey. Teach your children well, all right? Just make sure that they're listening to you. Did we listen to our parents? I think we did. I think we did a little more. Once we realized in our 30s just how wrong we were in our late teens and early 20s, I think maybe when Plus, our parents it. didn't sugarcoat. Really. No, they didn't. You no, know? they didn't. But, hey, we're special, right? <laughs> I guess. All right. Hey, that's it. That's all we have time for today. Boomersbraintrust.com is our website. You can click on the Ask the Brain Trust link to get an email to us. For Dinah Smith and everyone else, I'm Johnny Dean. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We're talking about what's important to you, your money, your business, your life. This is Boomer's Brain Trust. The views and opinions expressed on the show are not necessarily those of this station or its sponsors and should not be considered as legal tax or investment advice. You should always consult with the appropriate advisors before making any financial decision.